So there's still no telling how long President Cyril Ramaphosa will take before announcing who will be the country's next Chief Justice. The Judicial Service Commission has recommended Justice Madi Samaya for the job. The SCA Judge President uh, won the nod through a majority vote, we're told, and if appointed, will become South Africa's first woman Chief Justice. Quizzed on her views on transformation of the bench, she stressed that there's no shortage of capable women judges who are actually capable of also leading the judiciary. Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa is not bound, however, by the recommendations from the JSC and, in fact, is well within his rights to pick any one of the four candidates. For a sense of what the way forward may look like, let's bring in Ndando Sindani, who's an academic at the University of the Free State's Faculty of Law. Uh, Ndando, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks very much indeed for making time to chat to us. Uh, we'll speak about what the president is likely to do in just a moment. But first, let me just get your views on the, dare I say, space that was given in the Sunday papers yesterday for many pundits to ventilate just how flawed the interview process actually was. Do you think whatever dysfunctionality there was in the interview process is enough for us to redo the interviews? Uh, good morning, Ayanda, and thank you for having me. Good morning also to your viewers. Um, I think that I like the question that you are starting with uh, because uh, I also noted what some of the pundits are saying in the Sunday papers, and uh, I completely disagree with all of them. You know, um, in South Africa, we have a habit of wanting to, be, to behave as if we are objective when we know that we are not. Uh, the reality of the matter is that all of us uh, looked at the four candidates and had one in mind where we said, this one is my favorite. So what you have in Sunday papers are a number of people who had a candidate that they supported who eventually was not recommended by the JSC. So now they are wanting to paint as if the process uh, was flawed and all of that. Uh, from what I have noted and with my little experience, I don't think the process was flawed. I think the process uh, reached its logical conclusion. Mm. That said, though, this is not new. Uh, what I mean by that is the criticism against the JSC is not new. And in fact, a lot of people have, uh, interestingly enough, that the tongue lashing has been directed at politicians in particular. Do you reckon that's where the problem starts and ends with having politicians as part of the commissioners in this process? No, not at all. I think anybody who suggests that politicians need to be removed from this process is anti-intellectual and anti-democratic. I can venture even into saying that it is a very fascist thing to say. Why do I say this? Who are politicians? Politicians are public representatives, I am. So me and you who voted last year, who vote all the time, vote for politicians. So basically politicians are representing us, right? And so it's very, it's, it's very bizarre. And remember also the very constitution that people love so much uh, is the one that actually makes space for politicians to be in the JSC. Yeah. So if you say you want them to be removed, you, you are essentially saying you want the constitution to be amended, and that is a very bizarre thing to do. Mm. You speak about the, pol uh, the constitution. I think it's section 174 that actually reminds us that the JSC is only but one body that the president has to consult before making this decision. Um, he also has to speak to uh, some politicians and members of the National Assembly. With that in mind, do you reckon it is a foregone conclusion that Maya will be the one chosen for the role of Chief Justice? It is not. It's definitely not. And, you know, if I was in class uh, teaching my students, I would contrast Section 1743 with Section 1746. Because uh, Section 1746 uh, relates to the appointment of other judicial officers other than the Chief Justice or the President of the Supreme uh, Court of Appeal, right? Now, Section 1746 says that the President must appoint other ju uh, judges uh, of other courts with the advice of the JSC. And the operative term here is must. But Section 1743 gives the president what we call a prerogative. He may consult, they may recommend, but ultimately the decision is his. So technically speaking, the JSC can recommend as they have recommended. And in this instance, a recommendation is a recommendation. The president can, 
can take the process back if he wants to, uh, or he can just wake up tomorrow morning literally and uh, appoint somebody other than just need a judge, uh, Manisa mm, mm. I can already hear the, the dissolution, Dabang, as asking, so, so then what's the point of the week we've just all gone through? and what it takes to actually pull it together. And it's not to downplay what the JSC has had to actually, uh, you know, do over the past week, because at the very least, you can see democracy in action. A whole lot more people are interested in what it takes to have a judiciary with its credibility intact. But, I mean, if ultimately the president could, dare I say, ignore the JSC, many people will ask, well, why did we bother? And if he does, you are correct. If he does ignore the GSC uh, and people complain about it, they will be one within their rights to do so. Um, because, you know, in courts, sometimes in the courts, and I say this to my students all the time, we test rationality. So it can be contested uh, because nothing is cast in stone in South Africa. The Constitution itself is a living document. I must remind you that prior to the, the encounter case in, in the Constitutional Court, and there was a notion that the public protector's recommendation are just recommendations, they're not binding. Mm. But the Constitutional Court weighed in on the Uganda matter and told us that the public protector's uh, recommendations are actually binding. So with this uh, process of four people being interviewed, uh, there is, uh, it technically no, but uh, there is a space to actually contest and say, President, uh, what is the rationality in you not adhering to a democratic process and a recommendation that was so transparent. Mm. You speak about rationality. Is it reasonable, at the very least, to not have the law pronounce on how long the president should take before announcing his final decision? <laughs> um, because, well, again, to me, <laughs> that doesn't seem reasonable, if not rational, either. Look, um, I, I, I'm, I'm what in Africa they call a drug sitter on this one. Because, for instance, the Constitution and related legislation places a time frame on when uh, municipal, municipal councils must be constituted after the elections have been declared. And that is unreasonable because that is a very short time. We've, that's why coalition agreements collapse because there's that prescribed time. So I'm not really big on time and all of those things. The president uh, must uh, apply himself and apply himself fully because the position of a chief justice is not uh, it's not me organizing my bookshelf here. It's a very important task, so the president must uh, take his time. That's, that's at least my view. I can tell you you're more generous than, than many South Africans. That said, uh, speaking about the task ahead, I mean, you know, so much time was actually um, spent during the interviews ventilating issues to do with transformation. What do you reckon... Uh, Maya's biggest task would be if, in fact, this does become her job um, once she takes over? Look, uh, given the pundits whom I don't agree with, uh, how they're doubting her already, the fact that she's a woman uh, assuming this position would be, in the first year or so, she would have to fight dragons in terms of sexism and, and patriarchy in the judiciary. So, all, ask all women leaders, ask the first uh, female uh, vice chancellor of the University of South Africa or any other university where universities with a 145 year history never had a woman as a, as a vice chancellor. The, the first point of call is to fight against the misogyny. So I think that is one of the first things that she, she has to do. But also, where transformation is concerned, access to courts for the working class and peasant, peasant population of South Africa. It's still something that uh, we are struggling with in our uh, young democracy. So for me, those are the two things in the immediate that you have to be attentive to and really try to, 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 to persuade us. Mm, absolutely. Well, plenty has been said. Plenty more, I imagine will be said until that final announcement. Thanks for your take. Really do appreciate it. Dando Sindani is an uh, academic at the University of the Free States Law Faculty. Once again, appreciate your time.